friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Hello Bluebird Big Hugs Woodland stamp set. So I've stamped all the images I'll be using in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with the largest image in this little stack of critters and that is the bear. And I'm going to do something that's a little bit scary for me. I wanted to do a black bear. I don't think I've ever colored a black bear before. I think I've only done brown bears and polar bears in the past, but I've been really wanting to do a black bear. I live in Pennsylvania. We have a lot of black bears here, but I was just really intimidated. I couldn't really find the perfect marker combination for what I wanted to do and I get nervous about these super rich dark colors because they can make your images uh, kind of disappear. The face can get lost in all of that coloring and then it just looks like a big blob on the page. But I decided to go for it today and face my fears. So I'm using T5, T7, and T9 to start on this guy. I laid in some shadows all around the edges of this bear with that T9. Um, anywhere that any of the other critters would be overlapping his body and casting a shadow. But I did keep it pretty small because I didn't want his features to get lost like I mentioned. Then I blended that all out with the T7 and still kept pretty close to the outside edges to keep that dark concentrated there. And now I'm coming in with the T5 and beginning to blend that out. I'm also going to add a shadow on the left side of the nose where that would be pushed out and casting a little bit of a shadow. I didn't want to go too dark, so I just used the T5. And I'm realizing at this point that the T5 is not going to be my lightest shade. I'm going to need to add in another shade to help me fill in the rest of this area. But I'm going over the edge of that T7 with the T5 and doing kind of little circular strokes to break up that harsh line and try to eliminate that. Uh, I really want to have a nice smooth blend. And then I'm coming in with the T3 and doing the same thing, just kind of little circular scribbling motions to pull that color and fill in the rest of this bear's body. With the exception of his muzzle, I'm going to do that in a browns in just a few minutes here. So just working on filling him in. I know the blend isn't going to be perfect because I'm working with such extreme dark colors to light colors. So I am going to have to go back in and beef up that saturation a bit. So I'm just trying to get everything covered and saturated so I can kind of assess and go from there. And normally I do a complete second layer on most of my critters, especially the darker critters. But because he is so dark, I decided that he could get lost if I did that. So instead of doing a complete second layer on him. I just came back in with the second lightest, the T5. I added another layer of that and kind of bridged the gap between where the blend wasn't quite as smooth as I wanted and then came back in with the T3 to smooth everything out once again. Then for his muzzle, I'm going to use some E30s. I chose E30, E31, and E33, because these have kind of like a really natural looking, caramely toned brown that I thought would work well. So I added the E33 on the bridge of the nose, blended out with the E31, and then the E30 is what is gonna kind of fade into those grays. I also added some E30 into the ears and I did a second layer on the muzzle of all three of those shades. Then for the deer, I'm gonna keep that combo, but I wanted it to have a bit more contrast. So I'm gonna add in the E35 as the darkest and I'm laying in my shadows with that at the base of the tail and along the back and the hindquarters, along the neck and a little bit on the ear, on the bottom of the legs, and also in the crease 
where the legs are kind of crossed in front of the belly. So once I have that T35 all laid in, I'm going to start blending that out with the T33, just pulling the edge of that T35 into this next lightest shade so that I get a nice smooth blend once again. I really like to try to eliminate those harsh lines that can be left behind if you're not careful to make sure that your colors are kind of melding together. So I'm just continuing to go around that with the E33 and then I'll come in with the E31 and I am going to fill in most of this deer with that as my lightest shade. So I'm just going to keep that E31 for a couple little spots. So I'm going to fill in the face and the tail and the hindquarters. I'm going to do the legs all using just those three shades. And then I'm going to come up on that belly. And where I'm going to use that E30 is the area right around the eye. And then I also wanted to leave some white space on the throat. So I'm going to use that E30 to bridge the gap into that as well. So I still needed a lighter shade because that E30 on its own didn't blend very well into the white. So I decided to go with the E000 and that's what I'm going to use to transition from the E30 into that white cardstock. And to help that along, I'm going to grab my colorless blender and just go over the edge of that E000 and yeah, just kind of help that fade. I'm also going to bring that white on the throat down a little bit further using that colorless blender because I wanted that to be a little bit lower on the neck than I had left it. Then I'm going to go back to my T5 and T7 to color in the deer's hoof because I forgot to do that when I had those markers out. And then I'm going to jump over to my fox. And I'm going to switch things up for him today too. My normal go-to combo for foxes is YR12, YR14, and YR18. But I wanted that to just be a little bit darker and have a bit more contrast today to kind of stand up against that dark black bear. So I decided to add in the E19, which is a earth tone that has a lot of reddish tone into it. So I think it goes really well with these YR markers. So I used that E19 to lay in my shadows for this guy. And now I'm coming in with the YR18 and beginning to blend the edges of that out. And just like I did with the bear, I'm keeping those darkest areas uh, pretty close to the outline of the image because I really want to keep the face nice and bright. And also any area where I'm going to tr transition into white space, like I want to leave his little chest and belly white, that's where I want to have softer color to help bridge that gap. So I want to make sure that I leave plenty of room for the highlight. So now I'm coming in with my second to lightest, which is the YR14, pulling that color out even further. And again, just using those little circular scribbling motions that help break up the harsh lines. Because there is a big gap between the YR14 and the YR18. There's a YR16, which I also have, but I usually skip over it because it's very similar to the YR18. There's not a big difference there. So then I'm going to fill everything in with the YR12, except for those places that I want to be white. So I wanted the lower face to kind of transition into that belly area. So that's why I just left all of that white. And then, of course, the tip of the tail. While I have those markers out, I colored in the bird's beak with the YR18. And then for the whites, I'm going to go back to the combo that I used for the lighter parts of the deer, which was the E000 and the E30. So I used the E30 for those shadows, blended it out with the E000, and then I'm going to let that fade to the white cardstock for the highlight. For the bunny, I decided to go with grays. I was going to do him brown because I love little brown bunnies as well. But I thought with the bear it would be nice to have another gray critter in that mix. 
and I didn't want it to be the same grays as I'd used on the bear though, so I decided to go with the neutral grays, and I chose N0, N1, and N3, and I accidentally started with the N0, so I just switched that back out, because I like to color darkest to lightest in most cases, and did my shadows with that N3, and now I'm coming in with the N1 and starting to blend that out a bit. And then I'm going to come in with the N0. I also added a little N1 into the tail. And then I'm going to bring that color forward with the N0. I'm going to keep a white area around the eye, almost like a half of a heart shape. And then um, just fill in the rest of him, add a little bit of that N0 into the tail. And then I'll go back and add a little dot detail just to give him a little extra personality using that N3. I'm going to do that all along the back of his body and also his ears. And then I'm going to go right over that with my second layer um, just because I wanted it to be a bit knocked back. I didn't want the dots to be that obvious, uh, more like they just meld into the fur. So I just did the N1 and then the N0. And then for my squirrel, I had to go with a red squirrel because that is my most favorite animal. So I'm using E15, E17, and E18. If I had done the bunny in browns, I would have done the squirrel gray just to have a bit more contrast in this little scene. But um, I ultimately decided to go with the red squirrel, which made me do the, the bunny in the gray. But I think it looks cute either way. So I'm using that E18 to lay in the shadows for this guy and I'm doing those mainly on the right side just like I did with the deer. I'm basically shading the animals depending on which side of the stack they're on. So the bear was pretty much even because he's right in the center and then the animals on the left have their shadows on the left and the animals on the right have their shadows on the right. So I'm just filling this guy in. I blended out with the E17, and now I'm coming in with the E15. And once again, I decided to add in a fourth shade, especially for the belly, but then I also decided to just help that face be a little bit lighter using the E13. And then I'm going to do the bird, and I decided to go with a robin. Since I had all neutral tones for the critters, I decided to go with pretty much the most neutral toned bird there is, which is the robin. But he has a tiny little pop of color on the breast, so uh, I thought that would be a good one to go with. So I used E43, E44, and E47 for him. Put the E47 at the back of his head and his tail and the ends of his wings. And I'm blending forward with the E44 and then the E43. And then for his breast, I'm going to use R11, R20, and R22. Again, darkest to lightest with the darkest on the right and the lightest on the left. And I only did one layer on the browns of him because I was pretty happy with that blend, but I did do two layers on the breast. And now I'm going to do the flowers in this pink as well, just to have that kind of reinforced somewhere else on the card. I thought I was originally going to do the flowers in blue, which I think would be really pretty too, but I just decided to tie in that red breast somewhere else so the flowers were the only other place that really made sense to do that. So I'm just putting that color concentrated right around the center of the flower with that R22 and then blending toward the outside edges with the R20 on the smaller flowers. And then on the larger flowers, I also squeezed in the R11. So there's a little bit of a difference of them depending on how big or small they are. And then I wanted to give my critters some rosy cheeks, so I took away the R22, although I will have to add that back in, and added in the R000. So I'm using the R20 as the darkest for the cheeks on all of my critters, except for the bear. I knew it really wouldn't show up on him, so I went back to the R22 for that tracing around the edges with the R20, and then for the rest of the critters, I'm going to trace around the edges with the R11, 
also add a touch of that R11 into the ears of the fox, the bunny, and the deer. And then I'll go around that again with the R000 and finish off the ears with uh, that shade as well. And I did go back and add it into the bear. I just forgot in this moment, but after I die cut the images out, I did go back and add in a little of those shades to his ears as well. Then I'm going to fill in the centers of the flowers with the Y15. They're super small, so I'm just dotting that color in there. And I did do two layers of that just to make sure it was visible enough. And then for the greenery, I'm going to use YG13 and YG17. Starting with the YG17 closest to the stem on each of those leaves. And then I'm going to blend that out with the YG13. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go back in with the YG17 and add just a tiny little bit closest to the stem, just so there's a bit more dynamics there. And then I'm going to do all the rest of the leaves the same. I thought about doing them in a different combo of greens, but in the end, I just decided to keep it all consistent across the board there. So I just did the same exact thing, starting with the YG17, filling in with the YG13, and then going back in with a touch of that YG17 just to reinforce that darkness. Then I'm going to take a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eyes of the critters that have their eyes open, which is the deer, the bird, the bunny, and the fox. And then I will trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my focal panel, I'm taking a piece of Lawn Fawn Speckled Eggshell cardstock and one of the new Nesting Deckle Mini Slimline dies. And I'm just going to selectively die cut the top and bottom of that to give me that cool deckled edge. Then I'm going to take a piece of vellum and die cut the shadow of the Sending Hugs Word die. And I'm going to cut the actual scripty part of that out of some Lawn Fawn Ground Coffee cardstock. So then I can pop those little words out of the cardstock, making sure to keep all of the little bits. So the hugs is all separate, and then the sending is all in one except for the S and the dot of the I. So I'm just carefully pulling that out without tearing anything and then I can glue these together. So I'm going to start with the sending part minus the S and I'm going to be using my EK Success reverse tweezers to help me out here because that is such a delicate die cut and I want to make sure that I don't get my fingers too much in the way. So I'm just going to grab that and then I can use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue which has that very fine nozzle, which is going to be perfect for getting behind these very delicate scripty die cuts. So I'm just making sure to get enough glue on there that all of those letters are going to be well adhered down. And then I will carefully line that up over the shadow part and then I'm going to press it down into place. It was a little bit bowed, so it was tricky to hold on to, but I did manage to get that pressed down by just starting with the G and then working my way back and making sure that everything was lined up before I press that down into place. Then I can take the S, and you do want to make sure that it's going the right way. It has an extra little bit of swirl on the bottom edge. So I'll add some glue to the back of that piece as well, and then just carefully line that up. Make sure I've got it at just the right angle before I press that down into place. And then I can set this piece aside to dry. I am missing the dot over the eye. Um, I couldn't find it, so I knew it must have been stuck to my cutting plate on my die cutting machine. So I decided to just finish with the letters that I had here, and then I would go back and grab that eye. So now I'm just working on the word hugs. And I do love that the shadow part is all connected. It does make it so much easier to adhere to the final card because once you have these letters layered over top, then it's just one piece that you can add. 
and you absolutely can use the um, the letter parts without the shadow. I've done that on another couple cards as well. Um, I love that there are options with these dies. I think it's so much fun. But layering it over the vellum is going to give it more of like a ghost look. So there's just so much fun that you can do with these die cuts. I think they're wonderful. They just make such for such a nice bold sentiment on a card. So I found that tiny little dot of the eye was stuck to my cutting plate. So I'm going to add my glue directly to the spot where it needs to go and then just press that dot into place. And then I can set these two pieces aside and I'm going to work on my card base next. So I'm going to use a card that I've made out of some craft cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I'm stamping on the inside in some Lawn Fawn walnut ink and I'm stamping the little deer and bunny touching noses and I put together the rest of the sentiment which says and happy thoughts. So the whole card will say sending hugs and happy thoughts. So I stamped that down a couple of times and now I'm ready to start assembling. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel to give it some lift on the card and that's really going to help that deckled edge stand out as well because it gives it just the tiniest bit of like a shadow underneath it. So I'm going to press that down into place once I have it lined up evenly from the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to take that image and I want to get that lined up right so I get my placement for the rest of my words correct. And um, vellum can be tricky to glue down to a card, but because I have those other letters layered over top, I'm only adding my glue right behind them, behind the dark brown letters, and then none of that glue will show anywhere else. So I'm starting with the word hug, since that one goes down at the bottom. And I thought I had something stuck on there, but it was actually just one of those flecks that are in that speckled eggshell cardstock. So no worries there. And now I'm just tracing behind the word sending. Again, adding that glue right behind where it will be completely invisible on the final card. And then I can line that up right where I want it above the word hugs, but below that image. And now I have the same amount of space from the bottom of the word hugs as from the top of that image um, to the edges of that deckled uh, die cut. So that's going to be perfect placement. So I'm going to add that image right back where I had it. Just making sure that everything is centered nicely. And I'm not pressing that down too firmly because I do want to tuck these little flower images behind the tail of the fox and the deer. So I'm just putting one on the right and one on the left. And then to kind of cover up the stems, because I don't like those stems just being bare like that, I'm going to use these little grasses and leaves. So I have this one little cluster that I'm going to layer right over the top. And then I have the little leaves that I'm going to layer over on the right hand side. And then I have that final little grass image, which is going to go right down in the center, right below the bear and fox's foot to just complete that little scene. I felt like there was too much empty space around those critters at the top. So I'm taking the solid heart images in this stamp set and I'm stamping the largest one using Lawn Fawn bubblegum ink. And I did two of those, one on each side of these critter stacks. And then I'm going to take the tiny one and I'm going to switch that out to some ballet slippers ink. And I'm going to stamp that down a few more times, just making sure that that is really well inked up and then stamping that directly down. So I'm going to do two more on each side and that just kind of fills in that empty space a bit more. And I was much more happy with that. So all that's left is to add a tiny bit of sparkle to this card. So I'm going to take my favorite Stardust Stickles and add that to the centers of the flowers on either side of these critters. And my bottle was acting up again. I don't know what it is with this bottle. I've never had issues before with any other um, of my um, Stardust stickles, but this one is getting clogged up constantly. So I just used the pin from my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to clear that out. 
And then I'm also going to add a little bit of sparkle to the two largest hearts just to reinforce them a little bit too and have that sparkle one other place on the card. So I'll lift that up so you can see all of that detail and a little flash of that sparkle and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think these super adorable critters are so much fun to color and play with. I hope you love them as much as I do. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. And if you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything linked for you in the description bar below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.